so in some sense that uh, you bring some prize to the table, but psychedelics allow you to acknowledge them and then throw them away. So like one popular terminology around this in the engineering space is first principles thinking that uh, Elon Musk, for example, espouses a lot. Let me ask a fun question before we uh, return to a more serious discussion. With Elon Musk as an example, but it could be just engineers in general. Do you think there's a use for psychedelics to uh, take a, a journey of rigorous first principles thinking? So like throwing away, we're not talking about throwing away assumptions about the nature of reality in terms of like, our philosophy of the way we live day to day life, but we're talking about like how how to build a better rocket, mm -hmm. or how to build a better car, or how to build a better uh, social network, or all those kinds of things. Engineering questions. I absolutely think there's huge potential there, and it's uh, there was some research in the um, late '60s, early '70s that were it was you know, very early and not very rigorous in terms of um, methodology, but. Um, it was consistent with the, I mean, there's just countless anecdotes of folks. I mean, people have argued that just, you know, Silicon Valley was was <laughs> largely influenced by psychedelic experience. I mm -hmm. I remember the, I, th I think the, the person that came up with the, the concept of freeware or shareware, it's like mm -hmm. it, it kind of was generated, you know, out of uh, or influenced by psychedelic experience, you know. So to this, I, I think there's incredible potential there and we know really – Next, there's no rigorous research uh, on that, but. Is there anecdotal stuff like with Steve Jobs? I think there's stories, right? In your exploration of it, is there something a little bit more than just stories? Is there like a little bit more of a solid data points, even if they're just experiential like anecdotes? Is there something that you draw inspiration from like in your intuition? Because we'll talk about it you're trying to construct studies that are more rigorous around these questions. But is there something you draw inspiration from, from the past, from the 80s and the 90s and Silicon Valley, that kind of space? Uh, or is it just like, you have a sense based on everything you've learned and these kind of loose stories that there's something worth digging at? I am influenced by the, gosh, the the, the inc just incredible number of, of anecdotes surrounding right. These, I mean, um, uh, Kerry Mullis, he he invented PCR. I mean, absolutely revolutionized biological sciences. He says he wouldn't have you know, won the Nobel Prize from it. Said he wouldn't have come up with that had he not had psychedelic experiences. Um, you know, now he's an interesting character. People should read his autobiography because you could point to other <laughs> things he was into. But but I think that speaks to the, the casting your nets wide and this mental yeah. flex. More of these general. The, these general mechanisms where sometimes if you cast your nets really wide and it's going to depend on the person and their influences, but sometimes you come up with false positives, y you know, um, you know, you connect the dots where right. maybe you shouldn't have connected those dots, but it, it, I, I think that can be constrained and, and, and so much of our, not only our personal psychological suffering, but our, our limitations, um, academically and in terms of technology are because of the self-imposed limitations and and heuristics the these entrenched ways of thinking you know like you know, those examples throughout the history of science where someone has come up with a, a, a rat the paradigm Kuhn's paradigm shifts it's like here's something completely different yeah. you know this doesn't make sense by any of the previous models and like we need more of those. We, I mean, you know, and then you need the right balance between that because so many of the you know novel, crazy ideas are just bunk, and you you need that's what science is about separating them from from the valid paradigm shifting ideas. But we need more paradigm shifting ideas, like in a big way. And I think we could. I think you could argue that we've because of the structure of academia and science in modern times. It heavily biases against those. Right. Uh, there's all kinds of mechanisms in our human nature that resist paradigm shift, quite sort of obviously. Uh, so, and uh, psychedelics, there could be a, a lot of other tools, but it seems like psychedelics could be one set of tools that encourage paradigm shifting thinking. 
So like the first principles kind of thinking. So right. it's a kind of, um, you're at the forefront of research here. There's just kind of anecdotal stories. There's uh, early studies. There's a sense that we don't understand very much, but there's a lot of depth here. How do we get from there to where Elon and I can regularly, like I wake up every morning, I have deep work sessions where it's well understood uh, like what dose to take, like if I want to explore something where it's all legal, where it's all understood and safe, all that kind of stuff. How do we get from uh, where we are today to there? Not speaking in terms of legality in the sense like policy making, all that like laws and stuff, meaning like how do we scientifically understand this stuff well enough to get to a place where I can just take it safely in order to expand my uh, thinking, like this kind of first principles thinking, which I'm in my personal life currently doing, like how do I revolutionize a particular several things? Like, uh, it seems like the only tools I have right now, is just, <laughs> just, but my mind going doing the first principles, like, wait, 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 okay. Why has this been done this way? Can we do it completely differently? It seems like I'm still tethered to the priors that I bring to the table and I keep trying to untether myself, maybe there's tools that can systematically help me untether. Yeah, well, we need experiments, you know, and that's that's tied to kind of the policy level stuff. Um, and I should be clear, I would I'd never encourage anyone to do anything um, illicitly, but yeah, I, you know, uh, in the future, we could see these, these you know, compounds used for the, for for technical and, and scientific innovation. What we need are studies that are digging into that. Right now, most of what the the funding, which is largely fun from philanthropy, um, not from the government, um, largely what it's for is is treatment of of mental disorders like addiction and, and depression, et cetera. Um, but we need studies. You know, one of the early initial stabs um, on this question decades ago was they took some architects and engineers and said, what what problems have you been working on? Where have you been stuck for months, like working on this damn thing and you're not getting anywhere? You're like your head's butting up against the wall. It's like, come in here, take, and I think it was 100 micrograms of LSD. So not a big session. And a little bit different model where they were actually working. It was a moderate enough dose where they could work on the problem during the session. Uh, I think probably I'm an empiricist, so I'd, I'd like to see all the studies done. But right. the first thing I would do is like a really high dose session where you're right. not necessarily in front of your, you know, computer, you know, which you can't really do on a on a really high dose. And then the um, the work has been talked about, like you take a really high dose, you take a journey, and then the breakthroughs come from when you return from the journey and like integrate, quote unquote that experience. I think that's where the, all the, and we're, again, we're, we're babies at, right. at, at this point, but this my gut tells me, yeah. yeah, that, that it's the, it's the so-called integration, the aftermath. We know that there's some form, different forms of neuroplasticity that are unfolding in the days following a psychedelic, at least in animals, probably going on humans. We don't know if that's related to the therapeutic effects. My, my, my gut tells me it is, although it's, it's only part of, of the story, but, but we need big studies where we compare people, like let's get a hundred people like that, scientists that are working on a problem and then randomize them to, and, and then I think you, you need a uh, um, even more credible, you know, active controls or active placebo conditions to con kind of tease this out. Um, and then also in conjunction with that, and you can do this in the same study, you want to combine that with more rigorous sort of um, experimental models where we actually get there are problem solving tasks that we know, for example, that you tend to do better on after you've gotten a good night's sleep versus mm -hmm. not. And my my sense is there's a relationship there. You know, people go back to first you know, principles, you know, questioning those first principles they're operating under and, um, you know, getting away from their priors in terms of creative problem solving. And so you, you ra I think, wrap those things and you could speak a little more rigorously about those because ultimately, if everyone's bringing their own problem, that's, that's, I think that's more in the face valid side, but you can't dig in as much and, and get as much experimental power and speak to the mechanisms as you can with having everyone do the same sort of 
you know, canned, you know, problem solving task. So we've been speaking about psychedelics generally. Is there one you find from the scientific perspective or maybe even philosophical perspective most fascinating to study? Therapeutically, I'm most interested in psilocybin and LSD. And I think we need to do a lot more with LSD because it's mainly been psilocybin in the modern era. I've recently gotten a, a grant from the Hefter Research Institute to, to do an LSD study. So I haven't started it yet, but I'm going through the paperwork and everything. And uh, Therapeutic meaning there's some issue and you're trying to treat that issue. Right, right. 